Are you sure? Is this 5197? Because I think... Hello and welcome to the stream. Uh, we're going to pick up from last time. <coughs> where I will start by coughing in your face. Okay, previously we were looking at the uh, penumbral situation here and trying to figure out what number to return uh, depending on wh whether we had a, you know, just a teeny eclipse, sort of a central eclipse, and then sort of a, you know, non-central eclipse, and of course the special case of when you're over here and you don't have an eclipse, but you're still within uh, angle U of the uh, point P as compared to PT. Uh, so those were the conditions we were looking at. Um, I was hoping to create a function that smoothly tells us how far, of, you know, how much of a partial eclipse we have, going from like zero here to one here, back to zero here. Uh, but it turns out that's painful because you have to decide on what value you're going to put if you're in here, or how you're going to decide that you're in here, which is by saying that the value of PT is less than the value of PM, which means you have to cover the entire situation where, um, you know, M is within this sort of circle uh, starting at P and having the radius of T. And so we don't really want to do that. So I am going to cheat a little bit um, and maybe turn this into a binary function, but I think I can do a little bit better than that. One thing I want to check on before anything else is whether or not um, I can use the geometric finder to find when a, a double precision value, a double, is between two numbers. I don't think I can, uh, but if I can, I have some more options here that I can change later on. Uh, but let's find out. User defined Boolean. User defined scalar, user defined, uh, those are the only two. So user defined scalar, that's not good. Um, so how did I get to there? Uh oh. All right, let's take a look at that again, see what the hell I did, how that, how that managed to work. Um, C spice doc HTML C spice index. I guess this would just be like an extra C spice in there. No. Okay. Well, we have a problem. I'm pretty sure the SSH. I'm pretty sure the mount's working. So let's take a look at what's going going on here. Um, spice. Uh, C spice. Well, that could be the problem. Spice by 64. C spice doc. And then those are not the, H the HTML, and then index.html. So we do have that. Uh, let's see what we're trying to get to. Let me just uh, see what the bookmark set to. Well, this is the bookmark. Um, I guess this should be. Oh, uh, there should be an extra spice 64 in here. Either that, or I could make a symbolic link that connects spice 64 to spice. I think we'll do it this way, though. Um, yeah, I think, I think this is good. Okay, well, let's go back to uh, user-defined quantities. User-defined Boolean and scalar, and so the question is, for a user-defined scalar, can I choose to be between two numbers instead of just using greater than, less than, and so forth? So let's take a look here. Um, here it is, the relate operator. Uh, greater than? equal to, less than, absolute min, max, local max, local min, uh, relate is insensitive to case. And it does appear that um, you can't search for it to be between two things. So we're going to cheat a little bit here. And what we're going to do is for well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to push this all to Git because I'm paranoid that I'll lose my wonderfully ter terrible code. Um, so let me go ahead and do that real quick. Okay. Now oh, it turns out I haven't even changed BC lib today, so that's a uh, that's uh, that's sort of not pointless. But there were other things that were changed. Okay, so let's take a look at this now. Uh, penumbral data. Um, I haven't documented this function, and I think I'm going to return a spice int, which gives me a little bit more flexibility than returning a boolean, uh, but less flexibility than returning a double, uh, because I, I think I'm just going to give a, a kind of a yes or no answer. 
and let me go ahead and copy this um, this uh, fuck the function um, description. Uh, well, we'll tweak it obviously. Given an ephemeris time, a light generating object, a T, and an eclipsed object as a flag value. Okay. Um, yeah. Let me go ahead and add to this a parameter, uh, just a ret, and this is not going to be used right now, but it lets us be more flexible with our uh, with our function in the future. A currently unused integer parameter. Integer parameter defaults to zero, and uh, I think I'm going to do what I said earlier in the discussion with someone in chat, which is. IO is really a terrible name to be using as an example. It looks like one zero, it could be input output, it could be on and off. There's so many things IO could be, and it could look like one zero. It's just, it's just a terrible name. I'm gonna use Ganymede instead. Uh, Callisto I know doesn't happen to have, I happen to realize doesn't have eclipses. Europa sounds too much like Europe, which is a terrible continent. And I'm glad Britain's getting out of it. That was a political opinion. All right, so that unused integer parameter pram, which were, which we might use later on. So what we want to do here is we've basically computed the positions. We um, oh, this is actually really nice. Um, the let's see the angle here. Distance from penumbral point, and then penumbral point. Oh, then we we compute the penumbral point, uh, which turns out not to actually need. Um, <laughs> turns out turns out we don't actually need to. Uh, the know where it is to find the distance to it, but that's just because... Oh, actually, sorry, we use the distance to find out where the penumbral point is. Okay, so now let's get our diagram and uh, let's go crazy with this. Uh, here's our penumbra. All right, so we're looking for the angle between um, PT, not TP, this going this way, um, and this minus the little bit of the angular radius that we have. And do we have any of that stuff here? Let's see. That's going to be a VSEP call somewhere. Okay. So here we find the... Um, oh, why don't I have this uh, documented? Is it because I was just cutting and pasting code from this thing? Um, all right, let me, let me, let me uh, be a little bit better about this. Um, radii of all three objects. Excuse me. And then we go ahead and just take the first value to be the radii. Compute the position of S and T with respect to Q. Um, so this is S, this is T. This is not really the origin, and I should probably get rid of these axes because they're confusing, and this vector because it's confusing too, but for a different reason. And this point, which is also confusing, also for a different reason. Uh, and so we're not really using a uh, this axis system here at all. This is just a, uh, the origin Q is somewhere else entirely. So let me see if I can get rid of this uh, these axes. Oh, nice. Okay, so this is what I'm trying to do. Um, and Q is somewhere down here. At, it's it's the origin. Uh, we just happen to not be using it because we want to be looking at this. So we can certainly do that. We can find the distance between um, the position of S and T with respect to Q. Not a problem. The penumbral vector um, is going to be S minus T. Now, be really careful here. I think this is the Penumbral vector. If you're at t and you get take s minus t in position, uh, you get to t. So it's the vector from s to t. Hang on, s minus t plus t. Yeah, from s to t. It's this vector going in this direction. It's the negative of the arrows that are pointing. And I, I don't know if I could actually do like a little reverse arrow thing here. I mean, without going over what I have here, like a sort of a a tilted line just for the purpose of not interfering with the existing labeling. Okay, so then we have st, that's the vector that tra uh, that's the vector that's traversing inwards. Okay, so far so good. Distance between s and t. Um, okay, oh, I guess I never finished this because this should really be penumbral vector. Okay, so we subtract the positions from S and T. The length of that vector is the is is the length of S to T. Distance from point to the penumbral point P for T. 
Um, that's PT, and we have, we know how to compute that using these formulas. Um, and then, um, I guess all of this just gives us the vector. Now we want, want the penumbral point itself. This is the point um, P right here that we're getting the penumbral point. And then we go ahead and print that out. Uh, no, sorry, we assign that. Uh, basically going from T and adding uh, the length of the umbral vector because it's going to be to the between T and S, not beyond T. So we've got this point now. So now I guess what we want is um, um, uh, and find penumbral point. Okay. So now what we'd like to get is the angle between the penumbral point. Well, there's two things. We need the distance, and we need the we need the distance between P and uh, in this is Q. I'll go ahead and change it back to Q. Um, because we are being generic, so that's Q. Uh, so we need the distance between P and Q and compare it to the distance between P and T. That's one thing. And the second thing we need to do is, um, is see what the angle is formed by this vector, but starting at P. So in other words, the, the, umbral vec the penumbral vector and, and Q, the vector from let's see, da, Q minus P. Or actually, I guess, because Q is the origin, uh, just minus P. And I think... Yeah, and I think we figured out that it's like you can just do pi o minus or something. Yeah, if we if we we're using the the vectors are going the wrong way for us because the s to t vector. Um, I'm sorry, I keep saying the wrong way, don't I? Um, maybe I should write some of this down. So s minus t. So this is the vector that goes from t to s. I'm sorry, this is this vector here. Um, and so we can take this angle, but then 180 minus it because we're going this way. Um, so let's look at the angle between. So the vector. This is the vector that we just computed, the penumbral vector, because this is the origin. And this is the vector that goes like this. Uh, the you know, value that's length like SP starts at P. And yes, we need to negate this vector to get to get our answer. Or we need to take this angle and then 180 minus it, or pi minus it. Okay, so what we want is the vector separation, v sub c, between the penumbral point um, and again, we, we, we do have to negate this, um, and uh, the penumbral point and the vector that goes from P to S, which I think, well, let's see. And I think that is, or do we, sorry, do we need it from P to T? Yes, we do actually. So this, and then we want, um, so both of these vectors are negated, I guess. So this is negated and this is negated. So, I think we actually get the correct angle there, um, because by parallel lines, I think we get the right answer. Anyway, uh, so I think this is actually the, the length, you know, if we put in the um, number and uh, the length from P, I guess the vector is going to be the same. It doesn't matter, um, doesn't matter where the vector is centered. Um, so the penumbral vector, and this will give us, I think, the angle between um, this angle here, T, P, Q. And so let's see if that is correct. And have I used the word angle in here? I have not. The pen ang, and that's just a regular double. Okay, now here's, here's the issue. Um, Now, there's a special condition here that if um, we're not going to implement it right now, but we will in just a second. We don't want it to be in this region here. Um, but okay, so we know that the, um, now we need to go over to this one. Okay, so we know that the vector that we want is, is uh, we know the angle of that vector. We want to figure out what V is equal to. And I could have sworn I had like a little thing here that told me what V is equal to, but it has vanished. Um, Always, always good to have these things go away on you. Um, 
Oh yeah, I think, but it's not that hard. It's going to be um, V, which is the deviance between the vectors, is going to be uh, the arc sine of QR over PQ. That's QR over P. You know what? I think I was copying from the other thing, so maybe I'll go back to that because I think I've got pretty much everything right here in uh, Eclipse Around the World. Um, so a penumbral point, which I'm calling the umbral vector, the penumbral vector. Let's make sure I've got this correct. Yep, distance between S and T, and here's distance from the umbral point P. Um, to T um, okay and then over here make um penum vect length PT subtract from T to find penumbral point okay, so we do that over here and then ah yes here we go wait the umbral angle. Okay, this is one we cannot copy and paste from because the umbral angle uh, in here is very different from the pen umbral angle that we're measuring here. So I think here we do actually have to sort of take a, a little bit of a different uh, approach. Uh, the pen umbral angle, which I guess we should call pen um angle to be pen um ang, um, is going to be the, uh, the um, negative of this uh, negative of this, so it's actually PQ, and the negative of this, but I think those two negatives cancel out. Uh, we actually want the vector wing this way and the vector wing this way, but uh, I think that all cancels out. So we'll just take that as the angle. We'll, we'll, we'll check, of course. Um, okay, and now uh, the angle, and let's see, that's not correct. So what we're looking for is the angle from the penumbral vector 2q from point p and oh actually this might be it except i think we said um umbral point like that umbral vector like this and i think we said we don't need the pi over 2 here because in our case uh, as opposed to in the umbral case those two cancel out so let's just call that angle q that is just this. And then the other thing, of course, is this is uh, Q is not just a point, it's a, ra it's a radius. And so that is going to be its delta. In other words, um, we know this angle here, but we want to know also the angle from here and here, the, the touching angles. And that's going to be ang Q of delta. So now, So now, first of all, if V norm of um, PQ, which is actually just the V norm of P, the um, penumbral vector, uh, is greater than PT, so Q has to be further away than T, and and, you have to be a little bit careful here. We want um, angle Q, this sucker, we want it minus um, angle delta, that we actually kind of want, um, unless it's too close to zero, then we want it to be zero. So uh, let's do, whoa, your mama, okay. So let's take the absolute value, floating point absolute value of angle Q, um, subtract angle delta, and I think we're going to be in a little bit of an ugly shape here. Um, no, uh, in fact, let's not do it this way. All right, so um, now angle Q can be negative or positive. The question is, um, right, is it between zero and, that's, that's what we need. And fab the absolute value of angle Q plus angle Q delta. Nope, wrong. The absolute value of angle Q is less than 
the penumbral angle plus um, I'm almost this is going to be a positive number so we don't need to we don't need to absolute value it delta so in other words are we within are we between this line and this line up to this little tweak if we are we are within the penumbra god willing um, if that happens we return 1 otherwise we return 0 I'm 99% sure this isn't even going to compile much less do what we want but um, give it a shot at least. Let's see. Da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da, da -da -da -da. This is probably unnecessary error checking code. Um, and this was just code that we created for testing. So now we can go back into our um, GFQ mode. Uh, so GFQ is going to be um, is going to be the value of penumbral data. Uh, I'm 99% sure this is going to fail. I, I've I'm doing something wrong for sure. Penumbral data, ET, sun ID, um, planet ID, moon ID, and we do not need to pass the extra parameter. It should automatically default to zero. And so then what we're looking for is when this value is equal to one. Um, and let me make sure I'm calling gfudc correctly. I'm almost sure I am. If, if there is a problem with this, this is, it's not that problem. It's something very different. Okay, hello if uh, anyone in chat is really there. And let's see. Um, relationship is equal, reference value is 1. Allow variation for absolute extremal geometric conditions. That just means that if you're at the edge of one of the intervals, and I don't think I care. Um, oh, okay. That's something different, but it has nothing to do with what we're doing here. So then we can do all this wonderful stuff. Um, yeah, I don't think we need to print any of this anymore, any of this debugging stuff anymore. I would like to print out the beginning and ending of the eclipse. So I would bet money against myself here that this won't work, but you know, we you can't debug unless you run stuff. Well, actually, you can, and you really should. Um, okay. DC occultations. Um, oh. So, I guess that's not how you default the uh, default a parameter in C. Uh, let's see. I'm going to keep that one. This one, this one, this one. I have no idea what the hell this is. Default parameter in C function. I c yes, we can leave this page. Um, I think we're going to say C because this is really not C++. Um, no, apparently, apparently, um, you can't do that in C. So much for my brilliant plan. Uh, we will just have to pass it as zero. Um, I'm in the wrong place. Param. Um, set to zero for now. So, all right, getting back over here. Um, not really happy with these checks, but whatever, because uh, they add too many lines to the program, and we will just put this as a zero, and now let's watch it fail for reasons that are not syntactical. Okay, um, vect, and of course I meant to say penumbral vect, so let's just see where I'm using um, um. Um, 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 I feel like I'm saying, and this is actually, so you gotta be careful here. It's pen on that. Pen, 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 nope. Pen. And this is the pen umbral point. 
pen, pen. I think we're good now. I think we've defined all our variables. I'll change them over a bit. Alrighty, so now we just need to run the damn thing. Um, and I guess, oh Jesus Christ, okay hang on. Let's see if we've run BC occultations here. We maybe have not in this window. Let's go over here. Not over here either. Oh, I think we have here. But I'm not going to time it, I just want to run it. Dun, 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 dun. Well, that didn't do what we wanted. Alright, let's see. And I think that is really enough time. I'll give it to year 2025, but I get the feeling that there's something more fundamentally wrong here. Alrighty, that kind of screwed up pretty quickly. Um, so let's see what we're doing here. Penumbral point, penumbral angle. V norm C of the vector is greater than PT. The penumbral vector. Um, this is actually not correct, is it? Um, the penumbral vector is s minus t. That's not correct at all. Um, so it's actually the uh, the point, the penumbral point, that is. Um, yeah, we're looking at the distance between q and p. That's the p is the penumbral point. Q is the origin. This should be penumbral point. Yeah, let's pretend that was the actual problem. Whoa! Yay! Because I was in this directory before it was remounted. Okay. Not good. Not good at all. Okay. So I'm unhappy. Um, let's see. Well, when in doubt, print stuff out. Oh, that rhymed. Cool. Okay, um... So I guess we can print stuff out right over here. And I guess we can also cheat and use our, our earlier printfs from the other function. <laughs> We're so clever. Again, we do have to change the penums to the to the ums and stuff, but that's not, not a huge deal. Um... So wherever we say um... I guess we should probably even name them, you know, label them as penum. Pen, um, pen, um, we do not need to be dividing by AU, but I'll get to that in just a second. Number point, pen, um, pen, um, pen, oops, um, all right, and then pen. I think we will leave these in degrees. That's that seems like an acceptable uh, little hack. Okay, so now we're gonna look for the word um, and if it ever shows up without a pen before it, we're gonna do something. Um, pen, um, pen, um, pen, um, pen, um, pen, um, pen. Ooh. Um, pen, um, pen. Okay, and now we're just gonna basically get rid of all the uh, AUs. No more division by AU is going to be occurring here which will also nicely make this all one line. Alright, let's rock and roll, see if that even compiles. Um, pen um angle, I guess I changed that to being pen um ang. Yeah, I did. And did I do that with anything else? Well, we'll find out. Alrighty, let's run the sucker. Now this is going to be very, very spammy, of course. Okay, so the sum position is this sucker, the t position is this sucker, penumbral vector is um, going from s to t. That looks about right. Uh, the length of st is this huge number, the length of pt, this number. The penumbral point is is this number a 
pinnable angle is oh okay pinnable angle and angle Q are not should not be identical that's very very strange in fact they seem to be identical more than once so something was wrong here um, yes and it looks like d I've defined the penumbral angle to be the same value as angle Q so let's take a look over here see what I did wrong okay the uh, penumbral ang the penumbral angle um, is U is the arc sine of um, SR plus T so where the hell am I using arc sine here uh, maybe I screwed that up somehow. The angle Q delta. Okay, yes, true. Um, that is also the angle Q delta, but it is also uh, is the arc sine of SR plus TR. Okay, so this is this is clearly wrong here. This is a sine of. Let me see what the hell I, how the hell I did it earlier though. Yeah, that's total bogus there for me to say that. SR minus TR, I was thinking a little bit too fast there. Over, do we have a definition for ST? Yes, we do. All right, booyah, whatever that means. All right, one more time. Okay, now let's see what we're doing here. And I guess now the penumbral angle is point, that seems about right, that this would be about 0.2 degrees in width. It'll vary a little bit, but not a lot. The angle Q is going to sort of go through a whole circle of things. And now let me see if we can do it without, um, well, you know, while we're at it, let's go ahead and fix our debug function. I'm not really, um, I'm not really, uh, do I care? No, we won't do it. At some point we do need to fix the debug function because it doesn't do what it says it does and it's not useful in its current form. Uh, so let's go ahead and fix this, da 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 da. Da, 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 da. And not looking good. Nothing's still coming up. So, oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, that's a different program. Never mind. Okay. So we are temporarily stumped. Well, I guess let's print out these values again. Maybe they'll give us some clue. Okay, so Unix time, the S position, penumbral vector, length of ST, these all seem okay. The penumbral point, the penumbral angle, 0.27, the angle made with Q is 37 degrees, with a plus or minus of 0.57. Let's see what happens to this angle as we, as time progresses. 60, 70, it's getting bigger and bigger, so it's, um, it's getting to be 105, 83, 82, 81. 78, 75, 74, uh, 66, come on, angle come down to close to zero. 44, 43, 33, 23, 15, 10, 9, 8, so I feel like I'm counting down now. 6, 5, 4, 3, uh-oh, 2, 2, 2.5, 2.3, 2 2.9, 1.7, 1.28, still not quite within the range that we need it to be, but um, 1.19, uh, not quite there, not quite, oh, and then it gets back up again, not cool, all right. So let's go ahead and do this. Um, let's go ahead and go back to what we had before. I guess we were not quite ready for this. So let's go ahead and go back to our little integer testing thing that tells us um, that uh, that just computes it for a various amount of time. Except in this case, we're going to be computing penumbral data. All right. Let's see what this does. Okay, and uh, 
this is and let me see what this actually is. I think this is date minus D. Um, I think this is the one year period that starts 2020, that starts this year. I am correct. Uh, not tremendously surprising. Uh, so penumbral data, let's see, we're going to um, angle penum, angle Q, and I think we're going to have to be a little bit better about, um, yeah, I think we'll have to find the day of the eclipse and just do it for that day because we're, right now, we're, we're struggling. Um, so let's go ahead and do this, partial eclipse, blah, 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 this is solar eclipse or a, this is a solar eclipse. Um, and this should this should work though. I mean, um, as long as we're doing our, our call correctly, let me quickly make sure we're doing our call correctly. Um, so the moon is the observer. Okay, wait. The Earth is the obscure, and these numbers don't matter because right now we're we're just printing out for a year. Okay. And the day of the eclipse is. 2020-0621, um, and in seconds, that is, in Unix seconds, that is this much time. Uh, so, I want to be a little bit obnoxious and just comment this out because we might want it later. It would be nice if I were to mention what times these were, huh? Um, from here to here plus... Um, one day, 86,400 seconds. And going one minute at a time. So here we should definitely be seeing some action. Okay. Alrighty. So the angle Q is nice and low. So we're not quite in the, we're not quite in the eclipse yet, but we're going to get there. 1.26, 1 1.25, 1. Uh, 1. Okay, we, we still have a little bit of time to go. 1.02, Okay. 0.825. So we're very, very close here. Um, almost there. And Two seven, so we're very very close. Point three six, okay, almost there. So here, point three five minus point ten is less than this number. We should here be returning a one, and let's see why we are not. Um, that almost worries me. Okay. Um, but let's actually be a little bit, uh, let's go ahead and print out the things that it actually looks at. So V norm, PT, ang Q, pen um ang, ang Q delta. And of course these are all numbers, percent F, percent F, percent F, percent F, percent F, and these are going to be, um, I'll just cut and paste this line in here and then we'll, um, we'll tweak away the things we don't need. So it's V V norm penumpt, the length of PT, the, um, I don't think we'll need, well, we're not going to say absolute value, we're just going to angle Q, and then angle penum, and then angle Q delta. I think that is the correct number of parameters there. Uh, all right, let's try it again. Okay. Let's get in up to over here where the uh, angle is really small. Okay. We could even make this more efficient by um, uh, by uh, by just jumping directly to when the eclipse begins. Okay, so we have Vn uh, is smaller than Pt. So if 
Hmm. So that might not be good. Hang on, this is 992, this is 1.3. So PT is, is bigger. Um, so that's, that is not great. Um, by the way, these numbers are much smaller because I'm not converting them to uh, degrees. But we still notice that 4536 plus 1751, roughly speaking, that is 62.62. Uh, .62. It is bigger than this. So the problem we're having here is, um, according to this, Vn is less than Pt, or in this diagram, the distance between P and Q is less than the distance between P and T. Um, so the umbral point is too close. Um, uh -huh. And why is that? The penumbral point is there. The distance to the penumbral point, the, the norm of this vector, is that, and the norm of PT is somehow much bigger. Well, slightly bigger. Um, does it get smaller or does it just kind of stay in there? It's kind of just staying there. Uh, this is not good. So let's briefly, briefly remove this condition just to see what happens. And I think then we're going to get results that are correct, but we're also going to get some incorrect results. But we'll see what's going on. So let's do this. We'll make that the only condition. And since we are uh, since we are printing out something, we don't need to actually, uh, let's see, returning. Here we go. And that's the Unix time there. That is 4.51 in the morning GMT. And something tells me that's going to exa agree exactly with what we are uh, looking for, maybe. No, it's not, actually. That's interesting. Okay, first location to see the partial eclipse begin is at 345. And that is the first one, right? Yeah, that is the first returning one. Well, let's see when the uh, last one occurs, then. Last one occurs at... 8.29 in the morning GMT, and that is very close to where the full eclipse ends, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a partial eclipse. We should be able to get that. Okay. Not cool. Um, and the fact that um, T pause is, like, way bigger than, uh, you know, the length of PT is bigger than the length of uh, the, penum the, the vector between the two is, is also ugly. So now we're going to do something I did not want to do, which is uh, give up. No, actually, I want to give up, but we're not going to do that. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to try to we're going to go back, and we know we can put force this problem into two dimensions like this uh, because we've done it before. Um, there's no need to do it, but we're going to do it now because I sort of want to see where all these things are and where we're getting all these crazy numbers. Um, so this is purely for printing purposes. We're not going to use it to make any determinations. Um, and we'll make a note here. Purely for understanding, temporarily, uh, reduce problem to two dimensions. Okay. And the only things we're going to need to remove, uh, reduce here are t pods and s pods, because I am pretty sure that um, no, Q is, you can't change the position of the origin using a, a matrix transformation. Uh, maybe we'll change the penumbral vector and the penumbral point as well. Uh, that Those might be the things we want to change. But anyway, um, we're just going to cheat and do what we did before by constructing this vector. Wow. Um, 
Wait, this is actually really weird. Oh, that's not even the correct one. Two vec, two vec. Oh, wow. Okay, well, same function. We're going to do it differently. So two vec, we're going to change um, st, the vector, wherever that is, uh, the penum vector, uh, which goes from here to here into the x-axis. The x-axis. And we will need a name for this matrix, which we're going to cleverly call mat. So if you've, uh, I guess we will call it matrix. Oof, why am I defining it like that? Um, we'll just call it mat. Okay. Number vector becomes this. The um, So we, we get to choose now a point to be on the... Um, Um, I guess all three of these will be on the x-axis. Um, I, do we choose Q to be the point on the, um, the number of vector 1, east vector... Well, it's not going to be the east vector. It's going to be something else. Um, so the number of vector becomes the x-axis. Now we can choose a point that we want to be in the x-y plane. Um, What point is that, though? Do we need to be in the... Because um, you know, we already have Q in the plane. It's it's the origin. Uh, T and S. Is this one of those things where we have more than one choice? Well, when in doubt, use git tk to find uh, the history of what you did and find where the other two vec thing is. We did have it in here at one point, I know. Um, Can I search in here? I should be able to, right? Containing, touching paths, adding a moving string to vec. Let's see. Okay. Um, be nice if you showed me where the hell it was. That's not what I asked for. All right, da 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 da. Okay. Oh, here we are. And makes the vector from S to T parallel to X and keeps S and T in the XY plane. That's what we need to do. We need to move either S pos or T pos into the into the XY plane and that'll make, mean the other one is also in the XY plane automatically. So that's what we meant to do here. We'll make it S pos doesn't really matter. And then we will do the matrix multiplication. And I'm going to copy these three lines, but it's actually, um, we're going to need to change them. Okay. Um, so now we need, uh, I'm going to call these things um, S temp, T temp. We don't need a Q temp because it's going to still be at the origin. Um, The penumbral vector, well, let's see, S temp, T temp, we know where Q is. I guess we still want to convert the penumbral point, um, pen um temp, and pen, we can't, I can't get that one, uh, pen um angle, penumbral point, what else do we need? I think that's it. So anyway, we apply these three matrices, matrices, to s pause to get s temp, to t pause to get t temp, and to penum temp to get penumb temp, penumbra, penum temp, um, sorry, 
we run it on the umbral vector, uh, pe the penumbral vector rather, to get the penum temp. Good stuff so far. Um, I guess we can we can just print some more crap here. Um, let's see, s temp. I'll even go full fledged and do this. S temp zero, S temp one, S temp two. Do the same thing for T temp and penumbral vec temp. That's T temp, T temp, T temp, penum temp. Penum temp. And tip. Okay, and at least some of the vectors here will the the angles will remain the same because it doesn't ma matter if you measure the angles uh, in a in a flipped reference frame or in the original reference frame. Uh, but this might be helpful. It might not be. Let's find out. Okay, compiled. Um. Okay, that's good. We have S temp is that, T temp is that. The penumbral vector is the vector that um, purely on the x-axis that does this. Good so far. Um, the penumbral vector... Right, and that's fine, that's fine. Um, the length of ST is exactly the sum of these two, which that seems roughly correct. Yeah, it does. Um, like the PT is, so I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, try to put these points on the on a diagram. And God willing, I won't mess up the ones I already have. Demo one. Existing matrix be gone. There we go. You have to say that, otherwise it doesn't work. Okay. Um, and now I do want my little axes. I want my axes back. God damn it. I want my grid lines back. Oh, cool. You can do this, that, or this. We'll, we'll go ahead and do the more standard one here. Alrighty. Um, so S temp is... Big number, 2263. So, uh, this is again a real problem here with this. Uh, I'll put this like 2263 right there. And it's going to be too big for us to actually um, really put to perspective. T temp is negative 388. So that is, again, not to scale because we can't do it to scale. Um, we'll put it like over here. Okay. Um, we don't have S, so let's call these things S and T. I'm sorry, that's S. This is T. And now the penumbra point um, is going to be between T and S, and if not, we have we have a problem. Penumbra. Um, Penumbral vector? That's not right. Um, P U temp. Where the hell am I putting this stuff? Oh, right, right. This all comes before the Unix time. Um, remember, this is before we actually uh, see the eclipse. So the penumbral uh, point is very near S temp, but it's zero. So it's. Uh, and already I'm suspicious because that shouldn't be happening. Because the penumbral point should be on the same line as T and S. So something's already wrong. Um, so the penumbral point should have an X, uh, Y value of exactly this. So why doesn't it? So let's take a look here, see what we're doing wrong. Um, oh yeah, I lost my... Um, I hope that GeoGebra kept my um, the one I wanted to look at, the uh, the penumbral point. Let's come on. 
What's wrong? It's open. Uh, yeah, that's what I want. That's not what I want. Pen Umbra. Fix. Be magic. There we go. Somehow my formulas got lost, but uh, I don't think I care. Anyway, this is close enough for right now. So let's see how we're figuring out what uh, P is. Clearly we're doing it wrong. Let's go back up here. Uh, we get the uh, body radii, we get the positions. We uh, take S minus T. Huh. Oh no, this is actually okay. This actually just says that the vector is a straight line, which it is. Um, between S and T, and this does look like it's correct. So this is actually, we're fine, let's go back to where we were. So this is, the, I'll go ahead and draw it as a vector. Okay. Um, so far so good. So we would expect the penumbral point now to be between P, uh, between T and S. Um, but I don't think I converted the penumbral point to an under our transformation. So let me go ahead and do that now. Um, so this should really be penum vec temp, penum point temp. And let's make sure we print them correctly. So this is p penum vec temp. And don't worry, I will fix both of them here in just a second. This is p uh, penumbra point temp. And here we have pen um vec, pen um vec, pen um vec, pen um point, point, point. Okay, now let's recompile. And let's, let's see what the hell we're doing wrong. Um, and again, we're doing it before the eclipse starts, but that's okay. So the penumbral point here is um, 9992, da 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 da. So it is, it is correctly between the two of them. Um, it's much closer to the sun. Let me make sure I'm reading the No, I'm sorry. It's, um, this is 151 million. This is 990,000. It's much closer to T as we would expect. So we will go ahead and call that the penumbral point and we will put it like right on this line. Um, and again this is not a, this is not to scale or anything. This is basically just um, I'm trying to figure out why we're getting such a weird uh, answer from the uh, from the uh, from the program. Okay, so Q is still way the hell down here. It's the origin. Uh, I can put a point on it. If you like it, put a point on it. And that's going to be Q. So, again, this is very approximate, but it certainly looks like this vector from P to Q is bigger than the, um, is bigger than the distance from P to T. Let's see what we're looking at here, though. P to T about 1.3 million miles. So uh, in this case, we're looking for lunar e solar eclipses. So this is the moon. So the distance from the moon and P, the penumbral point is about a million. And the distance from the moon to the Earth is less than that, I think. Um, let's see, one million. And... So the length from P to T is 1 million, and the actual vector, the penumbral point, we don't actually c compute its norm, but, well, actually we do, hang on, is 992,000. So that is, that is weird. Uh, that is not what we expected. Um, 
Now, of course, these numbers are all actually much, much closer to here. And so, so I guess I don't really get why this is this PQ is. Um, Yep, I don't get this. PQ is bigger than PT, blah, 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 blah. Um, hmm. Well, actually, of course, all of these... Nope, didn't want that. We can move this whole vector down, because it's much more like... It's much more like this. Um, but I guess if it's not to scale, I'm still not seeing it. And putting it to scale might be a really bad idea. Um, well maybe we can m make PT and Q to scale and then get rid of S, which uh, we'll just sort of figure out where, where that would be. So I guess we'll just delete this sucker. Be gone. Okay. That's Q. Let's go ahead and just put um, P and T. So T is, uh, let's make this, um, let's talk in terms of 100 thousands. So this is minus 3 comma 0.2, uh, like right there, compared to the Earth, which is still Q. Um, we're not doing the P umbral vector is uh, doesn't really matter because we only want the point. The point is going to be at 9, comma, point 0.2. That which, which seems like it's fine. This does not seem to be an issue. And this is going to be the, the penumbral vector. The penumbral point, rather. So it certainly seems in this that, uh, Oh, wait. Interesting. So the penumbra is going to come out like this, but the problem here is um, the penumbral point is closer to Q than it is to by quite a bit, in fact. Um, So we have Q's in this area here. I get the feeling I'm doing, I think I've got my test flipped or something. Um, but I guess even worse than that, we have a case where, um, okay, I need to figure out what I'm doing here. Let's make sure I understand this. So, yeah, this is the Earth casting its shadow onto the moon. So this is the moon, right? Because that's Q. S is the sun, and T is the sh T is the planet. Moon, Earth, sun somewhere way the hell over there. Um, so from the umbral point to the observer, to the Earth. I mean, we have this and we have this, but the penumbral shadow only is going to be to the west of the Earth? Really? Let's take a look here. Um, T pause is negative. Uh, sorry, that's not what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the temps, aren't I? T temp is negative. The sun is way over to the right. The vector is the vector that goes eastwards. Um, P U P T temp is nine comma point two, and of course Q is the origin. So, so this is the crossover point from the top of the sun to the bottom of the earth, and the bottom of the earth to the top of the sun. 
Um, and it expands like this. And... Yep, yeah, there's something wrong here, because if this is the Earth, that's the Sun, the, um... Okay, that's fine. That's still the that's still the umbral point. That's fine. Um, but for the moon to be eclipsed, it would have to be to the left of T, which is not happening here. So let's go. Let's go ahead and wait until we actually have a uh, returning one case, and we'll just use this one now. Okay, sun. Still, we're not going to bother, bother to map it. Uh, T temp is this minus three. Uh, this is like 0.06, so it's very, very close now. But it's still to the wrong side of the Earth. And that does not make sense. And is it because we're looking at a um, solar eclipse on this day, and for some reason I decided I was going to do this as a lunar eclipse? That's probably it. All right, one more time. So this time, uh, it is the Earth that is being blocked by the Moon. And this is the thing where we want to see when that begins and ends. So God willing, this will just work. But if it does, I'll be more surprised than if it doesn't. Uh, so 347. Uh-oh, that sounds like it's about right, though. That is about right. Okay, cool. And then... Um, dun 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 dun. Whoa! Hang on, we went kind of like a little gap there. Or that was it just going too fast? I was going too fast. Okay. And according to this, the end of the eclipse, the last second at which we still, last minute at which we still return an eclipse, uh, is this number. So if this works, that's great. I have no idea what the hell I did, though. And that's 9.33, and unfortunately, well, 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 3.47 to 9.33, and over here, yep, pretty much, we got that, we nailed that. So the only other question is, um, we were having an issue with the, the v-norm of the penumbral point being greater than pt. Let's take a look to see what that's doing now. Um, we want v-norm to be greater than pt, v-norm is greater than pt. V norm is greater than PT. V norm is greater than PT. Okay, so somehow we magically fixed it. I'm going to go ahead and push this to, to get before I forget. And uh, we'll go ahead and go back and uh, make the... Well, we're going to go ahead and get rid of all these printfs. Or, uh, and actually, we don't even need the matrix transformation. So we can go all the way from here. Nope, we don't even need this. So we can go all the way from here all the way down to the um, here replace this one to get back to what we wanted in the first place um, I th think I'm okay with this saying returning one every so often we can get rid of uh, this and God willing we should be able to see our eclipses for some period of time I don't think this will work, but let's see what happens. Well, it compiled. Always a good sign. Yeah, that's going to get... Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Wait. Okay, it does return one quite a bit. In fact, it returns one... 100 times. Hmm. Which is suspicious, but okay. So now what's wrong here? Um... Numbral data equal one. Uh, yeah, you should have a result for that, dumbass. Uh, all right, well, I guess maybe there's something weird going on here. And since this this is um, this doesn't actually return a value, but <sighs> oh, uh. 
I think GFUDs is actually for a, um, yeah. I think GFUDs is for a uh, floating point user-defined variable. And what we're doing, uh, user-defined scalar, I'm almost sure that has to be, that has to be a, a double. It can't be an integer, which is what we're doing. Um, yeah, and I'm, let me, I'm going to double check here, but, uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to get away with using an integer here. Double precision. Put double precision. Yeah, I, I, I just, I just think that's the issue here. Um. And I could return a spice double, but then we'll, we'll have the issue of, um, hmm. I could return a spice double, and then we gotta be, we, we could round it in this function, uh, just because we, um, we know that you're, you're not really supposed to compare, uh, you're not really supposed to compare, uh, doubles to other doubles. We're not supposed to compare floating point numbers. Um, but, well, fudge. And unfortunately, I don't know if you're even allowed to round floating point numbers and then compare them. Still wrong. Um, so me is smooth and happy right now. I'm either going to have to return a floating point number and then, mm, I mean, I could say, you know, greater than 0.5 or something, and that would be one. But if I'm going to use integers consistently, I'm going to ha also have to worry about things like uh, less than point, um, less than point, you know, 1.5 and 2.5 or something for the value two. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and replace this with a, with a binary. Please, please don't cry. I'm talking to myself when I say that. All right. Returns. Um, returns when param equals zero. True if any part of Q is experiencing partial eclipse. So this is going to be a spice boolean. And instead of returning one, we're going to return. Uh, we're just going to return this, which is a because it is a boolean in and of itself. Okay, I'm unhappy now. All right, so now instead of GFQ, we have to use uh, the uh, the binary version of this, which is GF something else. Not not that much worse. I mean, it's right here. It's GF GFUDB. Uh, C. Um, <sighs> let's see. And this function is going to be a spice boolean now. And and we can't do this anymore. All right, GF. But saw it, see. All right. The name of the routine that course yeah that's going to be the GFQ value. Name of the routine that compares the oh. What? Um. Wait. This is the binary version, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, boolean, binary. The routine that computes a scalar quantity of interest Why would that be interesting though? What are we using that for? Uh, it is not due to numerical truncation uh, It is normal for the condition near the endpoints, that's fine. If the required... Boolean function evaluates true. 
Um, the Boolean function includes an argument for an input scalar function. Use of the scalar function during the evaluation of the Boolean function is not required. Uh, provides no opscalar routine UDFC as a dummy argument for instances when the Boolean function does not need to call the scalar function. That sounds like good to me. So we'll put that there. Um, let me make sure I've got the order correct. First input is the name that computes a scalar quantity, so that is UDFC. The second is the one that actually computes whether or not the value is true or false. Um, right, and then the step size, which we I think default to be like 3600. That might be actually a bit big though for eclipses. I'll leave it like that for right now, but I'll put a to-do on it. Uh, because you can have pretty short eclipses. Um, 3600. Then uh, the uh, that's the step size. And the window. So this has got way fewer arguments than the other version. Um, so that's CN fine and result. Okay. This isn't going to work, but let's figure out why. It's always exciting to see why something doesn't work. Uh, Passed pointer type from incompatible pointer type. GFUD bees in file, okay, should be expected void void spice double spice double spice double spice boolean, but argument is the choice spice double spice boolean. Um, okay. Um, I don't think that's true. Void, void, but argument is type void spice double. So expected pointer to a pointer to a... Mm, that's not correct. So we want a function that takes... Yeah, that takes... Oh, wait. Do they have the first two flipped? Ooh. Uh, let's see. F name of the routine that can be the scalar quantity of interest. We don't care. Name of the routine returning the Boolean value. So, um, the calling sequence for UD fun is the name of the scalar fun. Oh, um, et expol, and then expol is set. It is a void. Well, only if with true conditions defining non-zero measure time intervals. The if the use of UD funds is um, by the user's design, um, let me see. I know I've used UD I've, I've used this function before. Uh, UD UFUB GFUB. I'm not. Even, I can't say it, but I've used it. Let's see. Oh, have I not used it? GFUB B. Oh, that's what I meant to do. Yeah, let's see. I, I know I've used it in the... Oh, there it is. No, that's what we're using now. Here's the one where we used it as an example. Let's take a quick look here. And I'm pretty sure this is one of their examples. Oh, yeah, you need to do this. Um, and then I actually define GFQ a little bit later on here. Um, what the hell? This might be a literal copy, though, of what they did. Um, so let's just see what how they define GF. This is the signature. Um, here it is. Uh, no. Um. So does this example not even compile? Well, yeah, it does. So it's got to got to be defining that somewhere. Um, okay. So somewhere you're assigning value. I mean, 
Oh, here it is. Okay. I'm not happy about this. Um... Yeah, I'm not happy about this. I really don't want to go this extreme into a, um, into a Boolean function. So... We're going back to the future. Not really. Um, we're going to go and tweak this again. I'm going to go ahead and do a, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do a git push in case we want this back, but I don't think we will. Let's go ahead and make this a spice double again. When prime equals zero, return, uh, less than zero if no eclipse, one if central eclipse at center of Q, um, and uh, let's see, between zero and one if partial eclipse somewhere on Q. Okay, so all this remains the same. We could almost put this into a subroutine, but we won't. Uh, this, 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 uh, da 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 Here we go. So now, oh, and we can actually put in, um, negative one if, um, eclipsed body, uh, Q, is closer to penumbral point Yes, we're cheating. Penumbra point, then T. That is a hack. I fully admit that this is a hack. And to do, we'll to do, find smoother way of returning function. Um, so if V norm C of pen um point is less than PT, return minus one as a, as a decimal. So otherwise we're going to return, um, we actually came up with it in uh, the readme stream and I didn't delete it yet so we're in good shape. Um, here it is. Return the um, that's the actual angle with the center which is angle Q um, got to be careful here. Um, yeah, we actually want the absolute value of angle Q. I'm pretty sure. Angle Q divided by the umbral angle, or penumbral angle in our case, plus the angle Q delta, which is what we're calling the rad angle, plus one. So I think that is correct. And now, of course, over here, we need to go back to... Uh, is greater than zero, because we flipped the sense of our test. Um, now this is still possibly true. So I'll go ahead and put this as a question mark here. Um, That looks like it's fine. This is going to be a spice double. I see the word boolean anywhere. Why do I have the word? F why do I found find here? Oh yeah, just for this test here. That's fine. Over here, if we have the word boolean anywhere, no, we don't. Okay, I don't think this is going to compile, but we're, we're closer to where we want to be. It did, okay. Cool. And, oh, gorgeous! If it works, it's gorgeous. If I can cut and paste correctly, it's gorgeous. 346.20, and that is a um, very close to the actual time. 
for the beginning of the partial, and now we should get the end of the partial eclipse. A 9.33.45, within 16 seconds, not bad. Let's see what the next one is, and it looks like this is a good chunky time later. December 14th of 2020, and we're still looking at solar eclipses. Um, they are freaking stingy about giving you eclipses. Uh, December 14th, we're saying 1334 is the start time. Uh, for the very first, very nice, 1334 and 13 seconds, we're off by about 18 seconds. Couldn't ask for more. Well, you could, the 18 seconds, but that's pretty good. And then we're saying 1852 is when the last, nice, gorgeous, beautiful. One more, and then we're going to flip to lunar eclipses, where I'm sure we're going to screw something up. I mean, there's just no way this is going to keep going. So June 10th, 2021 is the next one, according to this. And da 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 da, lunar, lunar, June, oh, okay, man, we're, we're, we're cranking. This apparently is annular, but that's okay because we're looking at partial, so we will hit annular as well. Okay, so June 10th at 81242, they say 81220, 22 seconds. Brilliant. Much better than I expected. And the ending time is 1311. Let's see if we agree with that here, and they do. Gorgeous. I'm going to push this to get, I think I just did, but just in case I didn't. And I'm going to even put it as a working exclamation point here. Okay. So now we're going to flip to lunar eclipses, and that just means we flip that the moon is being eclipsed by the Earth, at least in part. Dun dun! Okay, according to this, the first one's going to occur at January 10th, which is, by the way, eight days away. So, if you want to watch that one, and then maybe this will work, I don't know. Uh, oh, 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 no, January 10th, that's fine. We're good, we're good. And according to this, it starts at 1707, we say 1712. Um, that's not great. But within five minutes, not too bad. If we get the end time of roughly right, 2107, according to this, it ends at 2112. 12. So we kind of killed it, we snipped it by five minutes on either side. Um, and I guess we just have to deal with that. Um, I, I guess I'm, I, I'm okay with that. I, it's, it's not great though, I'm, I mean, but there might be more to it than we're, we're seeing. So the next one, June 5th, is that going to be, do we agree that it's June 5th? We do. And we think it begins at, the, these guys who are correct thinks it begins at uh, 1745, we say 1751. Interesting. And we say it ends at 2058, these guys say it ends at 2104. So we're, we're losing about five minutes there, and I'm not exactly sure why. I mean, we are using the Earth's largest radius instead of using the average radius, which we, which we could get. I mean, we, we could do that. Um, but you would think with the larger radius, we would have more of a lunar eclipse instead of less of a lunar eclipse. Um, so a little bit confused here. On the other hand, we are making assumptions like uh, the Earth is spherical, uh, and, and a few other things. Not, not great, though. Not, not super happy. So one more, and if this works, we will be convinced that this is working for partial eclipses. July 5th at 3.15. Survey says... three oh seven. So again, we're a little bit late to the party here. Interesting. Um, and our ending time is 0544. They say it's going to go till 0552. So we're off by that eight minutes there. Not great. Not great. Um, 
and I and I don't really see why that is. Um, but certainly we're in the right right ballpark. This this program is computing eclipses in some reasonable way. So now let's try the um, something that's actually not going to require us to put a less in front of it. The observer is going to be Venus. The sun is always the light source. The nope, 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 nope. The observer is going to be us here on Earth, and Venus is going to be eclipsing us, the sun as viewed from us. This is going to give us the Venus transit that occurred in 2012, unless I totally screwed this up. Okay. And so let's take a look at the Venus transit, see when it began and end. Um, 2012 Venus transit. And let's see if we can get... Um, Let's see here. We began at 2209 on June the 5th. <whistles> within 50 seconds. And ended, according to us, 451 on June 6th. They say 449 on June 6th. So, yeah, we're pretty close. We nailed that pretty well. Transit of Mercury which actually occurred nearly at the same time, I think, unless I'm, I'm remembering, misremembering. I am misremembering. Let's see when that was. Dun 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 dun. Dun 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 dun. Ooh, there's more than one. Transit of Mercury on, in 2003. I don't remember that. Okay, transit of Mercury. Maybe there's enough of them that they need to group them together. Um, 2003, May 7th, starting at 512, 5.13, we say 5.13 to the nearest minute, and we say 10.51, they say, oh, wow, that's way off. Sorry, we say 1031, and they also say, they say 1030. So we're down to the minute accurate there. Um, the next one, I'm just going to see if the date's correct, 2006, November 8th. Nailed it. Um, and I guess I was wrong about there being one in 2012. Maybe uh, I was thinking of the annular solar eclipse. May 19th of 2016. And is this one coming up? Well, if I cut and pasted it correctly, is it coming up? That one is on... Oh, we, we just missed it. November 11th of 2019. Bummer. I wanted to stare directly at the sun. Um, yeah, there it is. And I guess we don't have any coming up really soon in the future. Okay, so I'm fairly convinced we now have the routine for uh, partial eclipses working. Um, I think... I think I would now like to clean up a lot of this code. Uh, so let me go ahead and clean. Let me. I'm, I'm going to make sure it's you know. Uh, okay, in this case we really are all the way to Git. Um, so let's let's go ahead and do this by. Okay, so this is these um, these are all functions that are right earlier. They're fine. I do not want to be using functions like. Uh, these are good. These are all good functions. I like them. BC, these are all functions written previously. All good. GM info. That's probably one of the most useful functions I've written. It gives you sort of everything. Azimuth altitude, not a problem. Azimuth, which is just altitude, is decreasing. Previous or next time, blah, 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 blah. Previous or next time, too. I don't know why I need that. Umbral data. So this function... Um, I'm tempted to leave this one here. We need to fix this one, but um, that might be okay. Separation data. Do we use separation data anywhere? Uh, 
Um, I'll leave it because somebody appears to be using it in a non-stupid way. Perp vector. Uh, sounds like it's dirty. But I don't think we actually need it because I think it, it replicates a function we already have. Um, well, let's see if anyone's using perp vector. Um, God damn it. All right, we'll leave it. The ones I'm really trying to get rid of are like min corner eclipse. That's the one that is really horrible. And quite sadly, BC Observations uses that too. So God, maybe I can get rid of eclipse around the world. Separation data derv. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure I do use that. Oh no, I don't. Let's hang on. The only place that is used is in the definition in BC lib H. Yay, I can get rid of the piece of crap. Um, clips around the world. I really want to get rid of this one. Wait. Did I teach you a grep minus I when I did that? Okay, good. Uh, eclipse around the world. Okay, good. And we have it commented out in VC occultations. We'll get rid of the definition and we'll get rid of the commented code there too. Just because it's stupid. And then I think our penumbral data, of course, is our, our shining star function. Uh, VC occultations. Let's look at the... Um, Commented code here. That's all fine. This we'll leave in because we might want to use it for testing again. This we won't. Okay, 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 okay. We'll get rid of that. Jeez. Um. I don't think we'll need that anymore. We definitely won't need this anymore. And so we can do that. And good. That's gone. And then uh, we can get rid of the um, yeah, I'm tempt maybe we should really leave this all in here. Um, but yeah, it looks like we do have a something that works for partial eclipses. Uh, let me remake this to make sure I haven't broken anything with removing functions. Have not. And one day I'm going to remember what the order of these uh, these uh, parameters are without having to look them up each time. Um, so now, let's, just for fun, because our ultimate goal here is to be looking at eclipses of, the, uh, of Jovian moons, Jupiterian moons, uh, from, from, as viewed from Jupiter. Uh, so in other words, we want to know if, for example, Io, that's the observer of Io1, sons of the thing, and we want to know when, um, there's, there's going to be a whole bunch of these cases, when Jupiter partially eclipses the Sun as viewed from Io. And we're going to just randomly choose one of these times. And it, it doesn't, it, well, it lasts a long time. It, the partial goes to, to complete very quickly. So December 12th, 2020. Well, why am I, no, I want to find the ones that are like right now. Because I am awesome. It's because we're still really early in the year. Let's see if this one actually occurs in the future. Um, this is actually in the past, but just by a little bit. Alright, so let's see if we can find this one. And of course, this is mostly just an excuse to bring up. Stellarium! Everyone cheer. Stellarium! Yay! Uh, which, unfortunately, I cannot run in full screen mode. Uh, can I? No, I can't do that. Um... Oh, let's see. Image sensor frame, tell right site, occupant plugin configuration. Um, uh, nope, I'm going to have to alt tab out of you, but I think if I do that, it's not going to work. Um, let's see. All oh, right, full screen mode F11. There. 
Now we're out of it, actually. We were in it, now we're out of it. Unfortunately, we are going to have to look at it a little bit smaller than full size because I need to look back to where I am. Wow. Not at all what I wanted. Um, January, 20, January 2nd at 1157, but we need to go to I.O. first. First class to I.O., please. And we'll go roughly to the center here. I mean, it's going to vary, but whatever. Um, and then from Iowa, we want to find the sun. And of course, we're going to get rid of the horizon and the ground. Does Iowa have an atmosphere? Apparently, yes. Um, hey, and there's our planet Earth. How's it going, Earth? Um, and then we're going to change the time to yesterday at 11.55, let's, well, yeah, let's give it, let's get a little bit close. Let's say 11.31. Okay, so now we want to see Jupiter is, holy moly, that's a huge freaking planet. All right, so I don't think we'll have trouble seeing Jupiter eclipse here. And away we go. Okay, one second here. Pop-ups come in at the most annoying times, as I'm sure you know. Okay. I don't know why I'm doing this slowly, because it's we're not going to be that close. So we are saying that the uh, partial eclipse of the Sun by Jupiter begins now. 11.46.29, and we say it's going to be 11.57.25? That's quite a bit of difference. All right. Wow, we're way off. But I mean, you know, way off in the sense of just by a few minutes, but still. Uh, wow. And we say this eclipse is going to end at 1350.18. Let's speed up time a little bit to watch that. How close were we on that one? Damn it, that! So, 14.03 and it's emerged. We said it would emerge at 13.50. Not really great, and I, um... I'm not really understanding why. So 14.02.50 is when we sort of have the, the umbral edge showing up, um, and we say 13.50, so not, not really sure why that's happening. Uh, 12 minutes is a pretty huge gap there, actually, uh, so I'm not happy about that. Um, although it does look like in, in we are within the ballpark, uh, I think we should be more in the ballpark than that, so we need to figure out what's going on. It's also possible that, of course, um, Stellarium is using uh, VSOP instead of uh, Spice, so that might be part of it. And also, let me see if I have the settings set to, um, uh, let's see, information, display everything, navigation, tools, render solar shadows? Okay, that's kind of cool. And so that's not the one I want, though. F3, nope. F4, yeah, here we go. Twinkle, we don't want that. Dynamic eye adaptation, we don't want that just because we're, we're doing sort of more of a scientific look here. Uh, shooting stars, we don't want any of those. Those are just sort of annoying. Show planets. Simulate light speed. Well, I was that should have been turned off, and I agree that it should be turned off. Markings, landscape, um, here. Now the odd thing is, I don't know if we can save settings from here. I think we have to go back to F2 to save our settings. Okay. Which means now we're stuck in IO, by the way, uh, next time we come out. Okay. 
What the hell? Oh, it's one of the moons, I guess, of... Uh, what the hell? Hmm? I didn't know about that one. I guess that one must be visible from Earth, too. Alright, so that's... Um, that's Jupiter eclipsing... Um, we. That's Jupiter eclipsing I the Sun as viewed from Io. Okay. So now the next thing we want to do is, let's see, I've been going for about an hour 45 minutes. The next thing we want to do is we want to start looking at umbral eclipses. We want to be uh, looking at, um, let's see here, the umbral situation where the planet is between these two things here. Um, and, and return. And in this case we're also interested if the whole planet is eclipsed or only part is eclipsed. Because if the whole planet is eclipsed, uh, then what we have there is a, a that is a, a total eclipse, a total lunar eclipse, which is the kind of thing we're really looking for, a total obscuration of the moon, as opposed to a partial or a penumbral eclipse, which is what we're seeing now. Um, I will go ahead and end the stream for now. I probably will not be coming back tonight, uh, though I reserve the right to do so. Uh, thank you if anyone is there for watching, or if you're watching later, thank you for watching, and have a pleasant evening or whatever time of day it is. We'll leave you with this uh, shot of Tijat, whatever that is.